Hey everyone, welcome to the show. As you know, about once a year, I take a look at my top manga of all time, and each year it's a little bit different, whether it's the amount of manga I rank, the type of manga I rank, and this year is no exception. Yes, you've read that title right, we are going to be looking at my top 100 manga. It's technically top 94, but obviously I'm not going to call the video that, I'm not an idiot. That's right, essentially every manga I have ever read, at least to an extent, because there is a rule. While I have technically read a lot more than 100 manga, I'm only going to be including manga on this list that I've read a significant amount of, or have at least read enough to know what the series is, what its deal is, and if I like it or not. Something that's 50 volumes long and I've only read 20 chapters of, it's not gonna count here. And as always, these lists are objective. Uh, as you know, I don't really fuck around with those opinion things. It's alright if you disagree with me, but you have to accept that you are wrong. Based on all known laws of reality, your opinions are wrong. Now, the top 100 is cool and all, but I decided that I wanted to try something a little bit different this time when it comes to ranking these series. All the other times I've done this, I'd spent several days in advance planning and uh, rehearsing th these videos, but it's gonna be a bit different this time. Hey, That's right! <laughs> For the first time ever, I am going to be creating this list with you guys in real time. I have absolutely no idea what this list is going to look like. I am going in completely blind, I just threw together all of the manga I have read, scrambled them up, and we are going to be tier ranking them. This will give me an opportunity to look at each manga, give my thoughts on it, and uh, see how it compares to all of these others in my mind. The review scores I have given these manga are now irrelevant, as well as previous ranking orders. My opinions have changed on a lot of these series, some have stayed the same, some have gotten better. Trust me. You're in for a treat. As am I, because I don't know what the fuck we're getting into here. <laughs> we have a pretty uh, standard tier ranking here, A through F. F, of course, being the absolute worst. A being the absolute best. To get an A tier, it doesn't necessarily need to be perfect. Its flaws just have to be so minor that it didn't really affect my enjoyment much. And the top of the list, of course, is reserved for my top 10 series of all time. So without further ado, I say we get into this bitch. Helsing, one I read and reviewed quite Quite recently, and it's a pretty good starting point because it is uh, quite mid, I have to say. This is a style over substance series for me. I really like a lot of things about it. I think the art is super cool, the characters are super cool, but the story doesn't really do it for me, so it, it'll go there at C. Darker Than Black. <laughs> um, this is a, an interesting series. Uh, it was so comically fast-paced that I kind of enjoyed my time with it, but I also completely forgot about everything that happened in it about 10 minutes after finishing, so for that reason I'm gonna go put that down into D tier. Kengen Ashura. This is a very, very fun and exciting uh, action manga a tournament that spans multiple volumes, a lot of great characters, cool twists. Not one of my absolute favorites, but I do think it is a pretty solid B tier manga. Now we have Naoki Urasawa's Monster. This is absolutely without a doubt one of my favorite series. I'm gonna go drop that in the top 10 right away because I absolutely know it's gonna be there. Fantastic mystery, amazing storytelling and character development as Urasawa is known for. This is my favorite series that I've read from him and I think it is nearly perfect. One of the most perfect manga we're gonna see here today. The Flowers of Evil, another one of my favorite series. Is it top 10 worthy? I don't really think so, but it's definitely going to go into A. The first half of this series is just so wild and crazy and uncomfortable, but the second half really ties it all together, and uh, it's it's just a super unique coming-of-age story, and, and man, it's, it's, it's fucking wild. <laughs> Spy Family, another A tier. This is a great, great series, super wholesome. It has pretty much everything, great comedy, great action, a great story and characters. I'm really, really looking forward to the anime this year. I know it's going to blow the fuck up, and uh, it's definitely going to be deserving of all the praise it's about to get. Tokyo Ghoul. Um, mm, mm. I really, really do enjoy Tokyo Ghoul. I think I'm going to throw that up in A as well. 
Uh, and I should say, there are going to be a lot of A-tiers here. I've generally read more manga I liked than I haven't, so, you know, keep that in mind. But yeah, Tokyo Ghoul, great story. Really, really exciting stuff. I think the action and Ishida's choreography and flow and stuff is not his strongest suit, but overall it's a very memorable and iconic ride. The sequel series, however, yeah, mm, eh, I'm gonna... Mm, go and see. Yeah. And I'd put it below Helsing, yeah. It has a lot of cool moments, uh, but overall, it's not great. Not nowhere near as good as the first series, especially, like, the final half of it. Really leaves a lot to be desired, and I was quite disappointed. I know a lot of fans still really love Re, which is fine, but for me, it, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't it. Made in Abyss... Alright, it's been now, it's been a very long time, but I did think what I read of this series was quite great. Over the years, I've definitely grown more and more distasteful of the, uh, you know, lolly shit that's in this manga, uh, and I don't really appreciate it at all. I'll go back to it one day, probably when it ends, uh, but for now, I think it'll fit nicely in the B tier. Could go up or down, depending on what happens, but for now, yeah. You know, despite that major issue I have with it, I think the world here is incredible, and the characters are really likable, and the adventure is super fun, even if it's, you know, also disturbing as fuck. Attack on Titan. <laughs> Before the final arc, this would have been an easy A, but... Because of that final arc, I'm gonna go drop this in the B tier here. <laughs> I I still really like this series. Um, I think it's an absolute blast, and even keeping up with the anime, knowing where it ends up, I'm still having a great time with it. And the ending, yeah, while I don't hate it as much as some people do, and I still think there are some good aspects about it, eh, yeah, it really doesn't work that great for me. Uh, and I wish they had explained things a whole lot better. But Attack on Titan, it's still something I'd recommend to people. It's, it was a pretty great time. Nausicaa is gonna go in A tier. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. The legend, of course, Hayao Miyazaki. I, man, I wish he made more manga, man. But also at the same time not, because he spent all his time making, you know, masterpiece films, but Nausicaa's good, man. It's very good. If you're a fan of the movie, you absolutely have to read the manga. There's so much more to it, and uh, it's, it's brilliant, man. Such a good, well-told story, incredible art. Love it. Neon Genesis Evangelion. All right, all right. So I just read and reviewed this one. Did you guys enjoy that review? I haven't actually filmed it yet. Yeah, the timeline's a bit fucky here. I haven't actually watched any of the films yet. I, I hope I liked them. But as for the manga of Evangelion, I really enjoyed it. Not so much to put it in A, but definitely top of B. I think, you know, there are some slow parts. It takes a, a little bit to get going, but uh, yeah, I thought the ride was super fantastic. Uh, the themes that they explore are, are great, handled so well. And while people find the ending controversial, I did end up really loving it. I thought it was super fitting. And like I said, I haven't seen the films at the time I'm recording this, but uh, as of now, I do prefer this over the anime series. Uh, the anime is still good, but I, I, I like the manga more. Is, is pretty sick. The Record of Ragnarok. I love this series. As big dumb fun, and I think I'm gonna throw it in A. Yeah, yeah, that feels right. A tournament between gods and the strongest mortals who have ever lived throughout history is just a blast, man. Uh, the action on display is fantastic. The characters are exciting and cool. Can't go wrong with it. I'm very glad it has an English release, and yeah, can't, can't wait for more. Golden Kamui. This is one heck of a series. I don't think it's in top 10, at least not yet. I've only read a hundred volumes of it, uh, but for now it's definitely A tier. One of the best historical manga I've read, the attention to detail is fantastic. The characters are lovable, the story is super well told, action is great, it really has it all. Uh, it's a super special series, and uh, once it ends, I do plan to uh, read the whole thing finally, and I would not be surprised at all if it cracks my top 10 eventually. I mean, it might still, because I don't have any of this built up yet, but we'll, we'll see. Uzumaki by Junji Ito, really cool creative series, uh, probably B. Yeah, I like Junji Ito stuff, I think his work is really creative. Creative, uh, but where most of it is also short, it never leaves a super huge impact on me. Uzumaki is definitely my favorite of his works, though. Uh, I think it's crazy, and the direction it goes is fucking insane, man. 
Um, the fucking snails, man. Oh, man. I'm really looking forward to the anime for this one, too. I think it, it can be really cool. Death Note. Oba makes his first appearance on this list. A person who I've lost a lot of respect for <laughs> over the years, as you know. But I still think that Death Note is his best work. So I'm going to be putting it in B. Below Attack on Titan. Yeah. Death Note, it starts off really good. Uh, it loses a lot of its steam uh, in the second half. Still enjoyable, and it doesn't have a lot of the problems that Oba would develop later. But yeah, is good. Not as great as I used to think it was. Dead Man Wonderland, us going right to the bottom of D. Yeah. It was just a really obnoxious manga. The story was really bloated, and a lot of things didn't make sense about it. The characters, especially the main one, was very aggravating and a lot of it just came across as you know some emo 13 year olds a wet dream not the series i ever plan to return to samurai 8 this is going to be the first f of the list sorry about that kishi <laughs> so yeah this was a series that kind of came and went like a fart uh I honestly don't know what even happened here. Kishimoto, one of the most famous mangaka of all time, came back with a series that felt like he was falling into traps that he never should have fallen into as a professional mangaka of his caliber. It feels like the editors just didn't do their jobs here. We have mountains of exposition, a confusing storyline, a very odd sense of pace, and as it went on and the series wasn't showing the numbers, it was clear they kept trying to reinvent themselves, and it really just leaves the series as a mess. And of course, where it was cut short, cancelled, the ending is quite atrocious. And whenever that happens, I don't really blame the author for it, but you know, as a completed product, Samurai 8, it stinks. We never learn, man. My... <laughs> oh, my respect for this series, man. I mean, it was never super high to begin with, but yeah, we're gonna go D. It is fun. It does have a lot of cute moments and funny whatevers. But overall, this is a pretty middle-of-the-road romance harem series. But the ending is really the nail in the coffin for me. I thought what they chose to do with the ending was super lazy, a huge cop-out, and it added a lot more problems in retrospect. So yeah. Dragon Ball is a fun manga. I, uh, I enjoy it quite a bit. It, you know, it has its problems, a lot of them, <laughs> but it doesn't take itself very seriously. There's a lot of great, uh, great stuff over the course of it. I think I'm gonna throw it in B here. Oron High School Host Club. <laughs> This one's pretty nostalgic for me. It was one of the first anime I'd ever checked out. Unfortunately, I do prefer the anime to the manga. I think the manga is quite bloated, and a lot of the stuff doesn't work as well as it did in the show, and I know the show came after. But, you know, that's that's kind of was my introduction to it, and, you know, in comparison, the manga didn't impress me as much. Now, the stuff that the anime didn't cover, I, I liked and all, but it was never really something I cared to go back to all that much. Probably gonna put it in C. Yeah, it might be a B. I don't know. It's been a while. I'm not sure. I, I don't really see myself ever going back to the manga. Um, if they ever decide to continue the anime, I'd definitely watch it. But yeah, I'm, eh, eh. Mashal is a really, really fun series. I'm gonna go ahead, put it... Oh, oh do I... Oh, see, now it's getting a bit hard. Because we're, we're piling them up here. And I'm thinking, like... Is Mashal really better than Dragon Ball? Yes. Yeah. Mashal is super great. I love how it completely shits all over Harry Potter. Completely shameless about it. Uh, the fights are so creative, the way Mash uses his non-magical abilities. Uh, it's just great. Super fun time. Really hope an anime gets announced soon. Fire Force! Uh, uh. I really, really wanted to love Fire Force. I love Okubo's art style so much. Now the series is finally ending. A lot of the fans are going crazy about it. But I just can't be fucked. Uh, yeah. There there were some good aspects of this series. But to me, it was just... It was so, so boring. Such a slog to get through. Uh, they really go overboard with uh, shonen cliches and fan service. It just wasn't wasn't really my cup of tea legend of zelda yeah 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 see this it's a fine manga it's both mostly just fan service for fans of the games i'm a fan of the games and i thought it was cute and all but um yeah it's it's whatever it's fine don't read them if you don't know anything about the games though that that would be a horror <laughs> that would be a horrible time one punch man 
I think I'm going to throw this up in the bottom of A. I do think story-wise, it, it's not as interesting as it used to be. You can only go so far with this premise. I think uh, they've done an excellent job of, you know, capitalizing on it. But yeah, you know. what really steals the show, though, is uh, the comedy and the art. Uh, the comedy one one style is just fantastic. Um, I love it to death. And Yusuke Murata's art is some of the best I have ever seen. The man is a complete wizard. Uh, all of his art belongs in a museum. And, uh, yeah, good, good fucking shit. Astro Lost in Space. This series is fucking phenomenal. Uh, everything about it is excellent. It's one of the biggest surprises I think I've ever read, because it's such a short series, and it didn't really seem like the real deal. But after I read it, yeah. Yeah, just a crazy sci-fi space adventure, amazing twists, world-building characters, really catches you off guard with just how great it is. So yeah, it's a high A tier. Dr. Stone is a series that I really enjoy, but not all that much. Not as much as I used to when I first read it. I think the recent arcs of it have been a bit of a letdown, not as interesting as the first half, which I really did love. I'm not keeping up with the final arc now, as it's about to end. I'm gonna eventually go and read that, see how it all wraps up. I'm hoping for the best. I don't see it moving out of B tier. Hopefully it doesn't drop down to C, but you never know. I still, overall, I would still recommend it, because it's it's a pretty good time with a lot of uh, fun, science-y shit. Bleach! Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> it is very good at the start. In fact, I think early Bleach is fucking sick, man. Is great. Like, I sold the rest of this year. I still own the, those first 20 volumes, because they're so, they're so great. So much fun. But everything after that, man, my opinion of it just keeps, keeps going down. I, I really, really cannot be fucked. They redo the same shit over and over again. It just becomes so messy and convoluted, and the plot becomes so ridiculous, and there's so much bullshit in there. I just, I don't know, man. We're gonna, we're gonna go D there, yeah. The first part of it is really saving it from F tier. It really is. I still, I still highly recommend the first part of Bleach, but you lose me after that, man. 20th Century Boy is gonna go in A? Yeah, I thought, like Monster, it had absolutely brilliant uh, characters, and the, the story was just insane, man. And I really, really enjoyed it for the most part. I think it stumbled a bit near the ending, and there were certain aspects of it that I didn't care for all that much. But it was still such a monumental achievement, in my opinion. In fact, I think I'm... Yeah, when I actually look at this, I think I'm gonna move it all the way up here. <laughs> Like, it wasn't perfect, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed almost every minute of it, so yeah. Great, great, great story. Chainsaw Man is another A tier, but how A is it? I believe I'm going to put it slightly, yeah, yeah. Chainsaw Man fucking rocks. It's extremely dumb and doesn't take itself too seriously, but at the same time, it also explores some pretty profound themes. It's the weirdest thing ever. On almost every level, it shouldn't work, but it absolutely does. Fujimoto has some of my favorite action in the manga, and I am beyond excited not only for the anime, but for the continuation of the manga later this year. All right, big order. This is... And I do not say this lightly, the worst piece of fiction I have ever experienced in any medium. Everything about it is honestly indescribable. I don't know how anyone looked at this and thought it was acceptable to be published. It's almost an achievement how much of a disaster this is, but... I... I can't do it, man. This makes me anti-art. Planetes, this is gonna go up in the top 10 here. I recently reread this one, and it's absolutely brilliant. A sci-fi story set in the not-too-distant future, dealing with a lot of different problems that we face as a species. Our main character, Hachimaki, is absolutely incredible, goes through some amazing development. It's all around a nearly a perfect manga. I just wish it were a bit longer, because four volumes is not nearly enough time to spend with these amazing characters. Naruto! Alright, bitch, you are gonna go top of C. Yeah. Naruto is a series uh, where part one, I really enjoy. I think, you know, while it's nothing too special, it is a very exciting and entertaining battle manga. But it's part two that really starts to lose me a bit. There are definitely some great parts in there, but I think the quality roller coasters quite a bit, and especially the final arc 
uh, was a pretty big miss for me. So yeah, I'm pretty mixed on the whole thing. Uh, but, you know, I still respect it a lot. I think Soul Society is actually better than Naruto, but nothing in Naruto is worse than the final third of Bleach, so. All you need is kill. This was a fun time, a nice, decent manga, time travel shenanigans. Not much to say about it, but, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Phoenix, one of Tezuka's most notable series, a series that he unfortunately was not able to finish before his death. It is an anthology, stories about this mythical bird uh, in the past and the future. Almost all of these stories are exceptional and fascinating and brilliant. It would be higher, uh, but I think some of the series are a bit less interesting than others, but I mean, some of the stuff here is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, volume 2 and I think Volume 4, probably some of the best manga I've ever read, period. Food Wars? It's fine. It's fine. Uh... I heard it loses quite a lot of steam in its last parts. I never did get that far. I don't really care to read any more. Uh, but, you know, it was interesting enough. The art of the food was really good. And uh, I guess if this series achieved anything, it was making me very hungry. Oshi no Ko. Hell yeah, motherfucker. This series is indescribable. And I have no idea how it is so good. Comedy, drama, murder mystery, show business, loneliness, depression, romance, friendship, talking babies, reincarnation, mental health issues. What does this series not have? Right, you can't answer it. It has one of the most batshit insane premises I've ever read, but everything about it is fucking incredible. I don't know what it is about Akizaka's writing, man. I I cannot get enough of it. I think I I seriously think the man is a genius. Uh, and this this is still a quite a short series. It's only seven volumes long now, and it sold three million copies already. It's going places, man. Uh, I hope to God it gets an English release soon, and an anime would be nice as well. Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh yeah, baby. I'm thinking A tier actually. Yeah, really, really like this one. Would have been a B tier, but then Shibuya happened, and we, you know, those who have read it know what happens in Shibuya, and uh, I was not ready for it. Uh, it completely blew me away. I think it was one of the most exciting battle manga arcs I have probably ever read. It was just completely non-stop. The stakes were super high. It's all around just a really fun, fun time. We'll see how the rest of the series goes, but for now, I'm feeling very good about it. Fire Punch. Yeah, mm, yeah, I'm still not a still not a huge fan of Fire Punch here. A lot of people don't like my review for it, and fair enough. I think I could have been better about explaining some of my reasoning behind not really liking this series, but to me it was just fucking stupid. <laughs> I don't really think Fujimoto had figured out the balance of just being completely ridiculous and also trying to tell this engaging story. Like, I think he really nailed it in Chainsaw Man, but here it just feels a bit too disjointed for me. I do understand the greater themes that were present here, but again, they just didn't really work for me because things were so fucking dumb. But you know, if you are a fan of Chainsaw Man, I would still recommend checking it out because I know a lot of people love it, so you know, go, go ahead. Platinum End. Ugh. What a disaster, man, honestly. Oba. If Oba hadn't already, like, completely fallen, the, this was this was the absolute end of it. Uh, yeah, I'm actually gonna, like, there were, like, a couple moments of Samurai 8 that were decent. This, yeah. Not only is it a ripoff of another F-tier series <laughs> we're gonna get to, but the characters are just so bland, man. And the story is nonsensical. It gets so, so dumb near the end, and the actual ending is probably what keeps it in F-tier. Because, you know, it had great art and all that shit. But the actual ending, I've never seen anything like it, I don't think. Uh, and it is... A complete disaster. <laughs> and it's funny because the exact thing I predicted happened with the anime, and that's people would be really hyped for it when it first started, and then they'd slowly lose interest, and now where we are now, literally no one is talking about it. I don't know if people have collectively agreed that it's terrible yet, but I think everyone just forgetting it exists might have been a worse fate. A Silent Voice? Yeah, this is going in A. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's hard to compare some of these because, like, how do you compare Golden Kamui and the Silent Voice? You really can't. Uh, but I'm a. I loved it, man. I only recently read it, but um, fucking incredible, incredible stuff. The story of this deaf girl and her bully trying to redeem himself. It's just, 
Just beautiful, man. Love it. Super touching. Berserk, of course, one of the most significant manga of all time. One of the most influential. Probably gonna put it here. Here in A tier. Yeah, there are some parts of Berserk that, you know, keep it from being one of my absolute favorites. But the series is very, very monumental. But, like, the character work here is so fantastic. Uh, the art is, of course, some of the best in manga history. The action is just wonderful. I, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's Berserk. It's, it's still such a huge tragedy that Miura died before he was able to finish it. But he definitely left quite an impact on the world. So, Lon in our first, uh, Sano series here. And I'm gonna go throw it up in A. Yeah, it's a nice, cute, wholesome, and sad story, only two volumes long. Not much to it, it's just, you know, a slice of life with a bit of music and a bit of, you know, depression and stuff, you know, all that good stuff. It's cool. It's cool. Akira. Akira is gonna go... here. Yeah. Akira's fantastic, man. Of course, the movie is more famous, uh, and while the movie is kind of incredible in its own right, the manga, there's just so much more to it. The story is absolutely insane. The scope of it all, goddamn, man. <laughs> really fun stuff. Uh, you can't go wrong with Akira. We're getting to a lot of good stuff here. Parasite is another A tier. I love Parasite, man. Um, I'm gonna... I love Parasite. <laughs> Such a unique and inventive alien invasion story. The themes on display here are fascinating. The action is great. The relationship between the main character and his hand. I mean, come on. It even got a fairy tale crossover. Like, how more elite can you get than that? Good night, pun pun. This made me want to die. It is a fantastic story. I have to say. But, like... Shit, man. It's like a slice of life if your life was just a constant sinking ship. Pun Pun is a very, very, uh, silly little bird guy. But I really loved it. Like, it's it, this series is still stuck with me, uh, all these years later. Pluto! Pluto is phenomenal. Is it a top ten? I'm not quite sure yet. But it's definitely a very wonderful series a murder mystery uh, adapted from an astro boy arc a completely different take on it uh, it's a lot darker it explores a lot of the relationship between the humans and robots living in this world it, it's so so good man where the fuck is that anime it's been so long pokemon adventures i'm gonna go drop this in c probably before it's better than the zelda manga i think this series does a lot of interesting things uh, with the source material, and I do think it's definitely better than the, uh, you know, original anime series. But, you know, it's still Pokemon. It's pretty slight, pretty inoffensive. Uh, I think it is a good starting manga for a child. But, you know, compared to everything else here, it's, it's just fine. Claymore is something I don't really care for that much. It's okay. I mean, there are a lot of things I like about it. The action is really cool. There are interesting things about the story. But at the end of the day, I didn't really care for the characters that much. And I don't know. It's not something I ever really have any desire to go back to. I know a lot of people are huge fans of Claymore, but... Meh. Future Diary is Garbaggio. It's only going above Platinum End for the meme potential. Uh, but it's fucking bad, man. Like, of course, it, this is from the same manga as Big Order. And while it is significantly better from Big Order, it's not really saying much. Right off the bat, there are, like, a plethora of plot holes. The characters make absolutely no sense. The story makes no sense. All around a really, really gross time. <laughs> Fairy tale. <sighs> I've, I've dedicated so much of my life to this series, man. And I can't get any of it back. It has decent moments. It really does. But the overall package is weak sauce, man. The final arc is like non-stop atrocious event after atrocious event. Mashima admitted to writing the story by the week. And it really shows. By the end, this one was... A husk of its former self, and its former self wasn't even that great to begin with. Looking at this now... Yeah, yeah, not, not, still not big on We Never Learn, but, you know, I, I, I still enjoyed some, <laughs> some parts of it. Inside Mari, this one's also gonna go D tier, unfortunately. 
Um, I love... Get over there. This is a series... Oshimi is really good at doing uncomfortable scenarios, but I think he goes a bit too far with Inside Mari. Uh, this was not a series that I found much pleasure in at all. I thought the characters were very unlikable, and the twist was something I was able to predict very early on in the series. And the fact that the characters take so long to figure it out themselves makes them seem kind of stupid. And, uh... Yeah, I don't know. No, nope. Bakuman is the probably the most mid series here. Uh, where am I putting this baby? Is Pokemon really better than Bakuman? Yes. Yeah. It's a series that has so many good elements, but it's just bogged down by a lot of bad elements. From the romance, the main characters, the really stupid directions the plot sometimes takes, it really ruins what could have been a really special manga about the creative process. And while I don't think it is completely without value, I still, it's not, it's not something I'd really recommend to people either. Soul Eater... I love Soul Eater, I do. Yeah, okay, we're gonna plop it in eight here. I reread this last year, and I don't think I love the story as much, mostly in the final arc. I think it did run into a few problems there. But overall, it's just exceptionally fun. So, such great, great characters. Very unique and inventive world and story, and of course, Okubo's art drawing a monthly series. Absolutely beautiful. Girl on the Shore. This is a rare Asano miss for me, I have to say. It is a decently well-told coming-of-age tale, uh, but it is undermined by the extensive amount of child sex, uh, which made it a very uncomfortable read and not something I would ever recommend to anyone. Blam! Is a pretty fun time. I, I enjoy Blam. Not to the extent that some people do. It's a series with minimal dialogue and very, very high concept sci-fi ideas. Uh, something you can really get into, really analyze. But for me, it was just a it was just a fun sci-fi shooty time, killing alien robot things. Blue box. Now I know I gassed this one up a lot, <laughs> and deservedly so. I do think it's really good, but it's it's not like that high peak yet. I think it has the potential to get there, but right now it's just a really cute and wholesome romance series. They do have a love triangle going on, but it has not gotten to the point. Uh, that a lot of love triangles get to really annoy me. I still think they're doing a really good job with it. And yeah, cannot wait to see where it goes. Nightmare Inspector is a really interesting manga. It has a lot of cool and unique ideas. I just don't really think the overarching story uh, holds it together all that much. So I'm gonna go C tier. But yeah, if you're looking for something like you've never heard of, because I, I doubt I'm pretty sure a lot of you have probably never heard of this series, it might be worth checking out because it's got some it's got some cool stuff going on. Vagabond, yeah, that obviously is going straight into my top ten. Brilliant, beautiful, just God man. In a way's adaptation of the novel Musashi based on the real historical figure, it's just Oh, so good. From the god tier art to the excellently explored characters and themes, it's just... What else can I say, man? It's it's Vagabond. Barrage is gonna go in F as well. The same reason as Samurai 8. Of course, this one uh, started off pretty weak, and then it got uh, rushed into a horrible conclusion. So, yeah. I'm very glad Horikoshi was able to succeed after this one, but yeah, this one was was a pretty big miss. <laughs> I even think like for a rushed ending, it could have been handled way, way better. Demon Slayer, that one is going in the top 10, absolutely one of the goats. Have you seen that Sakuga? Have you seen that Sakuga? Tanjiro and Nezuko's relationship, uh, it's probably the strongest bond in manga history. Uh, nothing can tear them apart. I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding, okay, this one's probably gonna go... Uh, yeah, yeah, bottom of B. Demon Slayer is enjoyable. It's fun. Uh, it doesn't really do anything new or super interesting. It does have some annoying elements to it. But I think it is a very overhated series. Uh, like, to me, it's, it's good. It's a fun, decent time. If you're mad at people for loving this one, uh, grow up. Like, come on, it's, it's, de it's harmless. It's Demon Slayer. 
It's, it's whatever. <laughs> Kaguya-sama, Love is War, is going to the top of S tier. Um, you know, it's no surprise this is my favorite series and has been for a while now. I think Akazaka has created something truly special here, a manga that is consistently hilarious, touching, heartfelt, but it also excels with its character drama in the issues that high school students face. It does have some very mature themes in which it does not hold back at all, and now in its final stretch, Akazaka is really showing his strength as a storyteller as all of these plot lines are coming together and it looks like we're going to be in for a very satisfying ending. Like, it truly is like the best shit ever and uh yeah i can't wait for season three it's gonna be it's gonna be a it's gonna be a bop now the kaguya official doujin uh <laughs> we're gonna like i mean it's trash it's very self-aware that it's trash um yeah I'll, I'll keep it in c actually like a lot i don't like the etchy chapters which is maybe like a third of the series Afterwards, though, it gets into a really insane and kind of creative, like, what-if fantasy world scenarios. I think this manga captured the characters well enough, uh, and, you know, it was alright. If you're a big Kaguya fan like I am, it's probably worth a read at least once. Durarara is mid. Although I should clarify that, like, the first arc in the manga is easy F tier. And then after that, it's like maybe B, C tier. But yeah, like it starts off, it's just a disaster of an adaptation. I think the anime is great and exceptionally better in pretty much every way. So I definitely would not recommend this manga to anyone really. But yeah, the anime, it's great. It's a really, really unique story about all of these people living, living in this uh, crazy, crazy neighborhood. It's cool. It's, it's cool stuff. But manga, manga in it. Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Okay, Oshinoko, very good, and I think it's safe in the top 10 here, but it is still quite new, and, you know, we'll, we'll see how it is after another 100 chapters. But yeah, Full Metal Alchemist, it's just a brilliant, brilliant story. Uh, one of the best action manga ever, uh, and I don't think a lot of people will argue with that. From its world building, its storytelling, its themes, it's just, it's just something special, man. Uh... I, I really don't know if we'll ever see something like this again. I am looking forward to eventually checking out Arakawa's other series, the, the new one she's got going on. Because if it comes to even half as good as Full Metal Alchemist, it'll be a banger. Um, but yeah, it's just... Wow, man. Full Metal fucking Alchemist. Happiness is pretty great. Pretty great. A tier. Yeah, I love vampire stories when they're done well, and Happiness is definitely one of those. Uh, it's so brutal and visceral. Uh, but it's it there's something beautiful about it, too. Oshimi really knocked it out of the park for me While I had a few a few uh, problems with it It's definitely something I would recommend to horror fans vampire fans. It's just it is awesome hunter hunter Is gonna go top 10 Maybe our top 10 is getting pretty full here Might have to make some adjustments, but yeah hunter hunter is pretty goddamn brilliant if it had an ending, it might be higher, but, like, everything about it is truly fascinating. It, it does the standard battle manga thing, but it does it with such grace and sophistication. The power system and the battles are creative and excellent. The characters have so much depth, and even though the art gets shit on a lot, if you actually read the series, you'll find out that there's some really, really great looking stuff in here. I hope Togashi will return and complete it one day, but even if he doesn't, I mean, some of the stuff we have here, like the Chimera ant arc in particular, good shit, man. Kengen Omega, I like this about as much as Ashura. Um, you know, another tournament manga continuing the story, uh, and it's still really exciting. Uh, I think they do a lot of cool twists to uh, keep it fresh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I, I haven't read it in a while, but I'll get back to it one day, uh, because it is quite good. Orange... Another one I read recently. I think I'm gonna put it here. Orange is good. It's a good time travel, uh, future visions, shit, high school romance type thing. It's, it's nice, it's wholesome, there are some stupid elements about it, but, uh, overall, yeah, it's a good one. Ping Pong Easy A. 
Easy A, starring Emma Stone. This is a wonderful sports series, great characters, great matches of table tennis. The art style is very unique, makes it super memorable. I don't really have anything bad to say about it at all. It's, it's wonderful and it's very short, very accessible. The Quintessential Quintuplets. Yes, please, pump it into me, Daddy Negi. Wonderful romance series with great, fun, colorful characters. A lot of people didn't like the ending they are idiots if you if yes Negi's a foreshadow god you should have seen it coming it's just funny it's heartfelt it's it's beautiful it's beautiful assassination class sass room is okay it's very oh it's like aggressively okay it actually does something really interesting for a shonen jump manga and that it gets good at the end like how often does that happen it's like it's always they start off super good then fizzle out this one was all right and then it got like super good in the last few volumes for some reason so yeah if you like the start of this series of you know all these kids trying to kill their tentacle teacher you're gonna love it all the way through but for me it's all right I'm glad I read it once. Whatever. Yeah. Erased. <sighs> this one. Oh, God. What? Oh, man. I've not thought about it in this series in so long. It has a really great setup. Great setup, and it's going strong for a while, but man, that last third kills it so hard for me. There's so much nonsense in it. Like, I. And it comes such a slog. What happened? Promise Neverland would have been A. It would have been. And now it's just worse than Demon Slayer. <laughs> Still think this has one of the best first arcs I've ever read in the manga. It's brilliant and I... I still cannot get over how great it is. And it continues to be great for a while until it's not. Like, the final third of this series really crashes and burns. Not as bad as the abomination of its anime second season, but it's... it was not great at all. And, uh... Yeah. I really do love the art style, though. And I know these two are very capable, so I do hope whenever they make their big comeback, uh, they, they're a bit more focused and they have it planned out a bit better. Tomie is good. Good. It's good. Uh, it's, it's cool. It's kind of the same thing I have with Ito's other stuff. It's kind of too short for me to really get into, and Tomie is mostly just a short story collection of different stories involving Tomie. But she's a creepy character with creepy mythology, uh, I like her vibe, you know, probably wouldn't like to meet her in real life. But yeah, creepy and cool stuff. One Piece is gonna go... This one will be controversial. I mean, no matter where I put One Piece, it'll be controversial. But yeah, I love the series. I really do. I do think some of the arcs are better than others. Some of them really drag. But the fact that we are now over a hundred volumes long and so much of it is so good. It's really just incredible how it is still uh, going strong. And I do think what I've read of Wano has been pretty great. The best stuff in New World yet. So yeah, definitely excited to eventually catching up and eventually finishing the series. Because, you know, in the short term, we are still quite a while away. But in the grand scheme of things... One Piece might not be with us all that much longer. All right, it is time for the JoJo's. Part one being easily the worst part. Um, yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's a good introduction to Dio uh, and stuff, but overall, it's it's just kind of lame. It's like, whatever, has a good start, has a good ending, but yeah, yeah. If you don't like it, though, I would highly recommend toughing it out because uh, we see a sharp increase in quality uh, in battle tendency. Where's this one going, baby? Probably here. Yeah. Battle Tendency is really great. Joseph is such a great, great protagonist. Uh, Caesar is great too. Villain's kind of weak, but whatever. Stardust Crusaders, also good. Um, I think I like it more than Battle Tendency. Not by much, but it's good. It's a bit repetitive. And Rocky was still figuring out the stands, but it's it's good stuff. Uh, Diamond is Unbreakable is going to go to A tier, though. This one is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Let's put it there in between Tokyo Ghoul and Akira. Yeah. Yeah, that's when that's when JoJo really, like, finds its stride. The stands become incredible. Uh, we have great heroes, great villains. Golden Wind is very good as well. Not as good as Part 4, in my opinion. Let's put it here. Yeah. Bit of a weaker main character and main villain, but everything else about it is pretty fire. Stone Ocean, a bit of a step down. Uh, I'm gonna put it like... 
like here maybe you know it's good it does still has a lot of good elements to it but you know the pacing is a bit weird you know it's it's fine it's all right silbaron though uh is is gonna go up in the top 10 um how we how we doing here man we got eight in the top 10 already uh uh this yeah we, we might have the we might have to rearrange some stuff but let's i think i'll move this here yeah i'll move this here but yeah still ball runs brilliant to the peak of jojo in my opinion uh just everything about it is fucking amazing the story is so sick so good, man. Jojolian, also great. I don't think it really sticks the landing as well as some of the other parts, but overall it's pretty, pretty fantastic. And I would probably put it... I mean, it's very good. It's very good. I'd probably put it here. Watamote is absolutely wonderful. Uh, it really shocked me when I caught up to it, but it's really become one of my favorite slice of life series uh, i think the development that our main girl tomiko has is incredible throughout the series uh it has such a mean-spirited sense of humor but i really like that about it it really doesn't pull any punches and yeah all around great stuff to your eternity oh man i mm, mm, mm. it yeah it's a tier it's it's great just this fascinating story about this immortal creature and uh you know his journeys and the people he connects with and stuff it's uh it's something else man and surprisingly fantastic action as well from the mangaka of a silent voice which watch is a fun decent time you know i like it quite a bit i'm rooting for it i like the characters i like the story i think it has the potential to reach greater heights uh, we shall see, but for now, uh, yeah. Vinland Saga, of course, going into the top 10. Another one of my all-time favorites, uh, and has been for a very long time. I think the first two arcs are absolutely peak brilliance. And while the rest of the series hasn't really reached that height, it still remains super engaging and super enjoyable. Uh, let's... Do I put this above Planet... I think I will put this above Planet S. Mainly because there's a lot more to it, um... But yeah, Vinland Saga is fantastic. Good, good shit. Time Paradox Ghost Rider is another one of those axed series. I think this one had a super great, interesting first chapter. Very unique stuff where a character was getting sent manga from the future and then he was plagiarizing it to get his own hit. But almost immediately it falls very flat on its face and it ended up in one of the quickest cancellations I had ever seen. I did stick with it through the end and I wish I hadn't. I hope this mangaka gets another chance in the future because they had something great here, but didn't really pan out. Magi the Labyrinth of Magico is wonderful and brilliant and I want to have its babies. It is BAM. If only the ending weren't rushed, this might be top 10 material. Like it's so fucking good. <laughs> The, the world and the politics and the characters and the action and the comedy, it's all on point. Otaka's art style is beautiful. Love it. Haven't really gotten into Orient yet. Maybe I'll check it out one day. You guys love to let me know how that is. But yeah, Moggy's a banger. For fantasy fans, it's a must read. Haikyuu. Oh, I have a problem here. All right, well, we'll figure we'll figure this one out. For now, Haikyuu is brilliant, brilliant series of great competition, rivalry, camaraderie between all of these uh, volleyball kids. I love them all to pieces. All the games are exceptionally entertaining. Just, just wonderful, man. I miss it. I really do. <laughs> I only caught up to it like while it was ending, and I wish it had been around longer for me, cause it's it was brilliant, man. My Hero Academia is gonna go probably top of B. I really really like this series. Uh, I do have some problems with it, uh, and you know I understand some criticisms people have. I think there's way too many characters, which can make it unfocused at times. But like. It's so much fun. So much fun. This, this hero society, it's awesome. So many awesome characters. A really cool story that, in my opinion, has only gotten better. Uh, and we're here at like this big climax now. I don't know how close we are to the ending. But it's really exciting. Really wonderful. If it nails the landing, it might move up to an A for me. But yeah, for now, I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan. And last but not least, we have Blade of the Immortal here. This is a, a disaster. All right, there we go. Now, okay, obviously this one's going top 10 okay what are we doing here we have 11 in the top 10 this ain't good i'm gonna if only hunter hunter had an ending man 
maybe, but like Haikyuu's ending is so good. Anyway, yeah, Blade is my favorite action series. I think Samura is an absolute master of his craft. This historical story here is just brutal and breathtaking and brilliant. One of the best revenge stories I've ever seen. Manji being immortal leads to some really, really fascinating explorations of life and all that shit. It's just something else, man. Uh, can't get enough of it. Absolutely love it. All right, so I'm an idiot. I forgot uh, Kaiju number eight, which I had literally like just read and made a video on. Uh, I got it here at the top of B. It's a great, great series. Uh, I'm really enjoying it so far, but it is still very new. And, you know, I definitely think it has A tier potential, but for now, it's top of B. It's cool stuff. And we put Mob Psycho here in A. Uh, Mob Psycho's all around just fantastic shit, um, and I do think one's art does get significantly better, although, you know, it is a bit rough around the edges, but yeah, Mob Psycho, absolutely incredible, can't wait for season three, this is gonna be a fucking bop. And with that, I guess, uh, J Jesus Christ. Let's see if there's any final revisions here, I don't really think so, I think I did a pretty good job. Uh, ranking these here. Obviously this order will change a million times in the next few years, but here we are. This is what we're looking at. Haikyuu, Oshinoko, Steel Ball Run, Full Metal Alchemist, Planet Has, Vinland Saga, Vagabond, Monster, Blade of the Immortal, Kaguya-sama, Love is War. These are the best of the best. If you disagree with me, you're a loser and an idiot. Thank you all so much for watching. If you really want a challenge, rank all the manga you've ever read in the comments down below. But I will also just accept, you know, normal top lists. You know, because if you're not a crazy person like I am. Anyway, do you hear that sound? It sounds like Elden Ring comes out tomorrow. I think, I think I'm gonna take a break for a bit. This is eight years of manga reading, baby. What, what, what am I doing?